We have 89 chapters in the Gospels. Only four of those chapters are about the birth, and we celebrate Christmas. The majority of the 89 chapters of the Gospel are about what we're talking about today, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Welcome to Family Life Today, where we want to help you pursue the relationships that matter most. I'm Shelby Abbott, and your hosts are Dave and Ann Wilson. You can find us at FamilyLifeToday.com. This is Family Life Today. So we got Jeremiah Johnson back in the studio with us. So Welcome great back. to be here. Thank you. Love you guys. It's awesome to be here. I mean, one of the things, Jeremiah, I'd love to ask you is you mentioned family. Obviously married how many years? 20 years. 20? Yes, sir. Half as long as us. Five kids. Wow. I hope I look as young as you do, Anne, but <laughs> yeah. I hope I don't lose my He's hair like that. He's not looking Dave. at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're watching this on YouTube because he did not look at me and say I would look as young as you. Although we sat last night at a restaurant, this guy said, there's no way you're that old. I'm like, that's, that's yeah. nice. But um, no, you know, you're thinking about, you know, a question every parent struggles with is and you, you're in the age where your oldest is how old 14 and a half there going on 21 man so there you are yeah and so and your youngest is how old uh seven 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 <laughs> jeremiah has triplet yes. boys <laughs> yeah the last time you're here they destroyed our green room. yeah they did it was they awesome. did not just like boys should they no, leave awake everywhere and, they go you know tiles in the ceiling <laughs> move probably right. still spit balls on the windows they're probably doing that right now <laughs> you know justin but um no, I mean, as you think, and I know you talk to parents who have a teenager, and it could ha- happen earlier, but usually in those high school years, a teen could walk up and say, Mom, Dad, I don't believe anymore. You raise me in the church. We go every Sunday. Dad, you're an apologist. You're world-renowned. You're a PhD. I, I just don't know if I believe anymore. How would you counsel a parent or yourself in that moment? Well, you know, these questions have all already happened to me. Yeah. I mean, I have kids that are extremely inquisitive. Number one, encourage their curiosity. Mm-hmm. Never put down a question that they ask. Mm-hmm. Never not have time for it. And or listen, shame them for their yeah, doubt. Never shame them for their doubt. Of course not, because you were there once, mm-hmm. you know, or you might be back there. So be careful. But I always encourage them first. Let me make sure I understand your question. This is a great question. And by the way, they always want to ask questions at bedtime or when I'm exhausted, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or literally during the game. And <laughs> oh, thank God we can pause live TV now. And But I truly have, I mean, this is a part of my own sanctification is always having time to be present for their questions. Mm -hmm. So encourage the curiosity. That's so important. But make sure people understand that, um, especially our children, they respond so much better to questions than assertions. Oh, Lily, you should just believe that. I mean, come on, you come from a generation of Christians. No, it's like, well, Lily, let me tell you, why do we believe in anything right now? Let's talk about how do we know truth from error? And these nuclear devices that our kids have called phones, (laughs) they're they're truly (laughs) trying to find information. And I mean, you know, I'm learning all the, all the lingo, by the way, of Gen Z. So like Justin or Lily will say something, but I'll be like, hey, that's cat, man. (laughs) I hope people know what I'm, what I'm saying there. That means they're lying. Kids are totally... Being, their minds are being misguided mm. with things that are completely unfactual. And so how do we know anything's true? And so my kids go screensaver on me. You know what I mean? Screensaver. <laughs> if I talk more than 60 seconds, by the way, so good luck to all the parents out there and God bless you. <laughs> Say it in 60 seconds or less. And I'll just have one liners. Hey, I'm a Christian because Jesus rose from the grave. You know, I, I really don't know what you're asking me about in Leviticus right now. And you know what? I'm glad there's 3,200 questions in the Bible because I'm a lot of those we're going to get answered when we get to heaven. But the things that are firm, the very little we have to know to be followers of Jesus, those things I'm firm in. So I know if I can be solid in the resurrection and the deity, death, and resurrection of Jesus and the power of his word and that evidence, hey, I'm not going to get all the questions answered. And there's going to be some that I can't wait to talk about for all eternity someday. But I I just keep bringing them back to the golden truth of our faith, the deity, the death, the resurrection of Christ. And then, hey, let's look into those together. It'll be fun. But I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. And it's okay for parents to say, I don't know. And there are people who do. Let's watch a YouTube video. Let's watch an interview. Let's do a Bible study together. 
I, I was just going to say, some parents are like, well, we didn't go to Oxford. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we don't know all of the answers to these questions, but that's why you're writing. That's Literally. why you're putting out Bible studies. And putting it out in everyday language. Yeah. I mean, there's no hard words in my body approved Bible study. This is designed for busy parents who are Uber drivers of their kids, like my wife, to be able to say, oh, let's do day four, a proclamation of Jesus's resurrection. Okay, why is that important? And then there's literally fill in the blanks. What was your most significant takeaway? What do you find compelling? Pray together before watching this. I mean, I really guide the family by the hand Mm -hmm. to do the Bible study together so you don't have to have all the answers. And really for our kids, you guys know this better than most with the work that you do with families and ministry. It's not having all the answers it's keeping the conversation going yes they don't necessarily want all the answers because they're going to go screensaver after 30 seconds (laughs) anyway they want to know oh i could ask them that they've got an answer and i'll look into that or and never underestimate the power of the holy spirit speaking truth through you how it plants seeds when you don't think they're listening to i've seen that at work a lot you mentioned four reasons we can trust the resurrection in the Body of Proof Resurrection Bible Study, there's two books. There's the Body of Proof Evidential book, which is great, but the Bible study that's just come out is a study on the resurrection where I take everyone by the hand. There's video QR codes throughout the study, so you don't even have to just take my word for it. You can pull up a two-minute video here, two-minute video there. And again, I did that honestly with families in mind because Mm. who has time for a longer video? So your videos are short. They're very short, and then even in the the teaching segment. There's four different teaching segments. We filmed at Bethany. We filmed on the Mount of Olives. We filmed at the very resurrection tomb of Jesus. And then we end because we're all on the road to Emmaus. We filmed from Emmaus. What do you mean we're all on the road? We're all on the road to Emmaus. So in Luke chapter 24, which is probably one of the coolest chapters in all the Bible, because it tells us that all the Bible is about Jesus. Mm. So I want to keep looking at Jesus and our faith. Two disciples, Cleopas, and we have someone who's unnamed, are on this road and they're dejected. They had lost all hope. And they're like, okay, what are we going to do now? That didn't work out. Out, and someone begins to walk with them who they don't immediately recognize. In and fact, these guys have been following Jesus. They've been following Jesus, yet they, they could not real, they didn't realize it was him. You never know. Maybe, you know, we know we had nail marks in his hands. We know that he had a wound in his Mm -hmm. side. Maybe it didn't look normal, (laughs) but that's speculation. But one thing we do know is that we're all on this road to Emmaus trying to find Jesus. Jesus is with them. They don't even realize it at the time. But then Jesus begins to show them. What does he show them in their doubts? Scripture. He begins in the law, the prophets, the writings, and he said, these all testify of me, and then their eyes are opened. So their eyes were opened in their moment of doubt through seeing Jesus again, who they had seen before, and then seeing how he fulfilled scripture. That is the whole point. We have 89 chapters in the Gospels. Only four of those chapters are about the birth, and we celebrate Christmas. The majority of the 89 chapters of the Gospel are about what we're talking about today the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jeremiah, do you ever think, because as I read through the Gospels, I'm like, you guys, he told you over and over and over that he was going to suffer, that he was going to die, that he would come back again. Do you ever think this? Like, how did they not get it? Absolutely. I, and here's the interesting thing. That's such human nature, isn't it? <laughs> yes. When you're talking about Mark 8, 31, this is week two of the Bible study. We're from Dominus Flevit, um, which just means God wept in Latin. It's literally Luke 19. And one of the points of the Bible study is we, in all our religiosity, we can miss Jesus. So make sure we don't miss Jesus in all our religion because Mm -hmm. he weeps over the religious leaders in Luke 19 who said, if you would have seen the things that bring you peace, but they're hidden from your eyes. So that's why that church is called Jesus Wept. Mm -hmm. I'm filming from there, but I use John chapter 2, Anne, where Jesus said, remember, they always wanted to sign the Pharisees. And he said, I'm going to destroy this temple. And then I'll put it back together. I'll rebuild it. And so, hey, there's a lot of great practical things. Jesus can rebuild the messes of our lives. But he said that, John 2 says, and his disciples didn't realize until after the resurrection what he was really talking about. He did the same thing in Mark 8, 31, Mark 9, 31, Mark 10, 33 and 34, constantly predicting, using Hosea, using Hosea 6, 2 and 3, the Old Testament prophet of Hosea, and he applies it to himself. I like to say he messianizes the passage. He says, Mm -hmm. hey, that's about me. the son of man will be killed. And three days later, like I've said before, if the church had a hashtag, it'd be on the third day. <laughs> mm. 
on the third day, the son of man will be raised from the dead. He did that showing that there was a purpose to his death. Mm. The death of Jesus didn't take him by surprise. He came. Luke 19 said he set his face like flint towards the cross to pay for our sin. Jesus enters our suffering. He enters our shame. He enters into the pain of death for us so that we'll never be touched by that. So we have nothing to fear. And that's why the number one commandment of Jesus in the Gospels is do not be afraid. I know we've heard that a lot on like bumper sticker theology. There's 306, but I'm talking about actual things Jesus commanded in the Gospels. If you look it up, his, the command he said more to, than any others is don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid. Yeah, I was thinking if some listener just tuned in, they're like, who is this Bible guy? <laughs> this guy knows the Bible better than any, I mean, Jeremiah. And, and if you did tune in late, this is Jeremiah Johnson. He's a friend of family life, been on here. You're not just uh, an apologist who who knows the resurrection. You are, I mean, comprehensive bringing all this together. In some ways, I think a person could be intimidated. It's like, if I don't know the Bible like Jeremiah, oh, no, yeah. I can't believe. And yet, you don't have to know every <laughs> You have to reference. know precious little of what I've said today exactly. to believe. That's the great thing about the faith. The faith is simplistic, but it's also sophisticated. Mm-hmm. Something can be simple and sophisticated. And I want to just say this, I'm a truth addict. <laughs> and my prayer from today is that people will become truth addicts. Mm-hmm. And they'll see that with the power of the Holy Spirit, um, this is what's so great about Christianity. It's so understandable. And if you give God time, you know, if you read the Bible just four days a week, it has a radical change in your life. Mm-hmm. I'm not even saying every day. If you just read it four days a week, you're going to be a lot better of a person. The studies find that out. And so the resurrection, though, as I continue to just say, it's understudied. It, therefore, it's underbelieved. You know, we study a lot of secondary issues in the Christian faith that we all have opinions that? on. Oh, we study end times theology. You know, we study creation. We study origins. We study gifts of the Spirit. These are all very important things to discuss in the long scope of Christianity. But do you realize the resurrection is the key to all of those doctrines? Mm. 1 Corinthians fifteen seventeen, in an absolutely devastating passage, Paul says, hey, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, your faith is worthless and we're still in our sins. So think about what a heavyweight knockout punch passage that is. Mm. So we can talk about those secondary issues, and we should. But again, I want to have a faith that is Bible-centric. And the conversation that was most, in the words of Paul, most in the conversation of the early Christians was the resurrection. Mm. I mean, Paul twice in Galatians had to make sure he got the gospel right. I mean, this is Acts 11 and Acts 15, the Jerusalem conference. He literally, I just want to make sure I've got the gospel right. And so let's get the gospel right. I think Mm. we can do better there. The gospel is powerful and it's unstoppable. And it's not just something we believed at a youth camp when we were seven years old. It's something we believe every moment of every day. And that's what gives us hope. And Jeremiah, maybe I said this last time you were here, but 44 years ago, my first year of ministry, Ann and I just got married. We're at the University of Nebraska, basically working with college athletes and sharing basically Jesus. My mentor, who was on staff uh, for like 10 years for a while, so he's assigned to like train us, was Barry and is a physics major in college. Mm -hmm. Very astute intellectual. And he memorized books of the Bible. He would come to our staff meeting wow. and he'd say, okay, guys, I'm memorizing the whole book of John and I'm on chapter five. So I'm going to let me quote chapter wow, five to you awesome. of John. And it was powerful to sit and listen to somebody just by memory. And so this would be many times our staff meetings. We get wow. to the point, hey, give us John 18. And boom, we do it. Well, I go out sharing the gospel with Barry. I've, did I tell you this story? No, I've never so heard this. So this is fascinating. And it was on these dorms in Nebraska. And I'm a, like a trainee. So I'm like sort of, just watch me. You know, Barry's yeah. like, pray and watch. And so I'll never forget, we go in this freshman, sophomore room in some dorm and we have the four spiritual laws, a little track mm-hmm. that we're going to go through. So we pass it out to this guy who said he was interested, but then he starts mocking us. You know, like, oh, you guys, the religious guys want to try and get me to Jesus, right? And the door was open. So as guys walked by, he would yell at them and say, hey, man, I got some Jesus freaks. <laughs> Come on in here. Next thing I know, we've got 12, 15 guys laughing at us. Wow. In this room. They were just, he just, they came in and started making fun of us. And Barry passes out a 
four spiritual laws to every guy in the room, and he starts to go through it, just as there are physical laws that govern the physical earth. So, yep. And they all start laughing, and I'll never forget this. And I'm sitting there going, this is not going well. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be learning right now, but I'm not doing this again. I just oh, want to get out of there. And Barry was a master. He goes, hey, guys, you don't want to look at this thing? And they go, no. And he goes, throw it on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I go, what? And they all like throw it on the ground and laugh. He goes, let me ask you a question. Do you guys believe that uh, Jesus was an actual historical person? Every guy in the room goes, yeah. He goes, do you know what he said? Not really. And because he knew the word so well, mm. he just starts ripping off quotes mm. from Jesus. All about the red letters. The resurrection. That's so awesome. You said it yesterday, John 11, I am mm -hmm. the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he die, he will live. He must have done 10 of those. The mm. room goes silent. Mm. And then Barry turns and goes, if you believe in this man that I just quoted, you can have eternal life. Who's interested? If you're not interested, you can leave now. And I bet half the room left and mm. half the room stayed and we led them to Jesus. Wow. When you were saying it's all about the resurrection, I mm. thought that moment, I remember walking out going, now that was one of the best lessons I've ever learned. That's so powerful. You know, you can have a, a cute track and they're helpful. Right. But it really comes down to the historical reality this man rose from the dead and it proves everything he said. That's right. And all of Bible study from then on is figuring out what happened to us the moment we said yes to Jesus. Mm. I mean, I want to make that very clear. Bible study isn't about being more knowledgeable because mm. Paul said knowledge puffs up, love builds up. It's about, hey, let me figure out what happened to me in that moment when I barely understood anything, but I had enough faith in Jesus mm. in his death and resurrection for me to say, yes, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, follow me. And the rest of our life is figuring out what happened at that wonderful moment of conversion because 39 unalterable things happened to us, according to the book of Ephesians, the moment we said Jesus, that can never change. 39. You give I like that he knows 39 of them specifically. Yeah. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm. Uh, we were glorified at that moment, according to Ephesians. Um, we became an adopted son of God. It literally goes right through the list in the book of Ephesians 1 through 3. These are facts that happened to us. And again, you didn't know all that happened either the moment no. you became a Christian. It's like, you know, um, I can't remember what day I was born, but I have good evidence that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here right yeah. now. Yeah. And those truths begin to grow in our life. And that's the power, again, of locking into the resurrection more than just on Easter Sunday, more than just at a funeral sermon. Resurrection is the fuel that gives power to every other doctrine of mm -hmm. the Bible. The resurrection belief is what gives us hope. I mean, that's why there is this connection between hope and the resurrection, between assurance in the resurrection, between strength in the resurrection. Jesus couldn't stop talking about his death and resurrection mm -hmm. because that's what he knew we needed. And then there's incredible proof from the last 2,000 years of men and women who believed in this, who then go on to do remarkable things mm -hmm. for God. Well, let me ask you, with your Bible study, why did you want to take a film crew over to Israel? Which, by the way, you were over there and right after that, is when Israel yeah. was attacked. It was remarkable. We were there within days of the terrorist attack on October 7, filming in all these spots. And by the way, I'd never felt safer in Israel. I'd never had a better time. I've been many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take a film crew there because I have this problem of becoming a skeptic and a cynic that the Lord really works on me about every single day. And I wanted to be able to guide viewers like my family by the hand to say, this is the very spot where he rose from the grave. We're not talking about myths fairy tales, legends. We're talking about real people, real places, real events. This is the spot 2,000 years later where Lazarus came out of the grave this alive. Right here. This very spot. This is the spot where the Emmaus disciples were ready to give up. This is the spot where Jesus, they asked for a sign. He said, I'm going to give you one sign, Mark 12, the resurrection from the dead. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy this temple. That meant God was bringing heaven and earth together. Hmm. That's what he meant when he said, I'm going to destroy this temple and rebuild it. I'm bringing heaven to you. 
You don't have to go to one place anymore. You don't have to go to a temple. You don't have to go through this sacrificial system anymore. I am your sacrifice. And I love how John 2 kind of says, and they really didn't get it until after the resurrection. Just go read John chapter 2 for yourself. And so that's why I took a film crew, because we live in such a visually stimulated time. And it's fast moving. I kept having my boys, you know, no segments more than two or three minutes. So it's perfect for like a Bible study where you can watch what we filmed. It's fast moving. Feels like a doc documentary. It feels cool. It's got a great music bed and it just keeps going to all these places. But in all these places, I'm not like telling you how old the rock is. <laughs> I'm telling you what difference does this make today? What difference does it make in the here's then and the here's now? What are those timeless truths that we can lock into? Have you uh, watched it with your family yet? Oh yeah. And normally I hate to watch myself, but I've broken this rule be <laughs> because it was so surreal being there. And I want to say this, it, I've been in ministry now for over 20 years. I've never had a greater ministry experience in all my life. Really? Than and you've been over there before? Oh, I've been over there m numerous times. Yeah. But being able to capture that footage, because I do believe, unfortunately, with everything that's happening in the Holy Land, many people will just never go yeah. this side of heaven. I now have a gift to give them where I can bring that footage to them. And I've never seen footage from, you know, and I scour YouTube when I do my research no one has footage like what we have in Body of Proof, where really? you can actually see the sites and follow me into the very spots. Where else did you go? Well, we went to all the Jerusalem resurrection sites. We had to get a Hummer to go to the road to Emmaus, and that sounds extravagant, but until you're bouncing up and down side to side, because we truly had to go off-road to get there. A lot of people, I, because of my connections in archaeology, I know where the spot is. You say, well, how do you know that's the spot? You know my connections with archaeology. Those <laughs> guys, like, who? Are well, yeah, <laughs> I texted Ellie Chacron to make sure I was in the right. Yes. Do you see the milestones? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, there they are. And it's just right there. Um, uh, we went inside the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which yeah, was tell us phenomenal. Yeah, and so, share what the Holy Sepulcher okay, is. Okay, so the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, Holy Sepulcher, a sepulcher is a burial spot. That's all that is. The Church of the Holy Sepulcher goes back to the early 4th century, but it goes back much earlier than that. You have to understand the answer anti-Semitism of the Jews in the second century was so bad that Hadrian in AD 135 renamed the Holy Land Palestine. Mm -hmm. He demolished all of the Jewish holy sites. Well, he saw Christianity just as another Jewish sect, and they knew that they all rallied around this burial spot outside the city. According to the book of Hebrews, you were crucified outside the city. And so he, he demolishes it and he builds a temple to Jupiter and Venus in AD 135, therefore preserving the spot of Jesus's death and resurrection, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, people didn't travel a lot. Village memory was, was something that people had. There was not a lot of migration or people weren't as transient. Constantine's mother, who I call the mother of archaeology, 326, comes to Israel. And they said, oh, yeah, Jesus' resurrection happened where Hadrian put up that temple to Jupiter. That's the exact spot. It's unimpeachable. She builds a little church there called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where we've had it now. So the archaeology of it is fascinating. It's a 1,700-year-old story. The cool thing is, though, National Geographic, not a Christian publication, did a remodeling of the actual resurrection tomb in 2017. It was open for 60 hours, and all of it is first century. And these are skeptics. These aren't like evangelical Christians yeah. testing this. It's all first century. It's all right place, right time. We had the option to film somewhere around the church complex. In fact, when we first went in, and you're hearing this only today on Family Life Today, by the way, some of this delicious <laughs> detail, we were told you can't talk. You can just film B-roll. But the Muslim man who is interesting, a lot of Christians may not know, a Muslim family has the keys to the holiest side of Christianity and opens the door every day and locks the door. On my original body of proof book, I actually have a picture of the little house or what's called the edicule. And I showed the Muslim man, I said, Hey, but I wrote about this. <laughs> he stops a line that people have been waiting in for eight hours. It looks there's 20,000 people a day that just, I mean, maybe more than that. And I'm able to take a camera with me into the very shelf that Jesus body came alive on in his resurrection. I'm amazed that you, I've been over I mean, there I'm standing four right there, times. I'm kneeling down. I'm like, this is the very place where his body came back to life <sighs> wow. and walked out of that tomb right there. 
And then there are other tombs around it. A lot of people don't know this. I know where the tombs are, the other first century tombs, because again, he's buried in a first century rock hewn burial ground and and essentially a rock quarry. And so that's just one of the four weeks. But it's amazing (laughs) that he let you do that. They're so strict. Our crew was like, just go, go, go. And we just kept the cameras rolling. So as you saw the slab where Jesus Mm -hmm. came alive, like what were your thoughts? Did it feel like a holy moment or were you in your head? Could you really experience it? I thought I was going to blow up. <laughs> I was so excited. Really? I, just, I had never been in there before because I'm not going to wait in that line. Me neither. And so I'm not only there for the first time myself, they're filming my reactions. And of course I got through all of the content and then I was in there alone. And it was just amazing. It was amazing. It's the foundation of our faith. It's the foundation of our faith. And from what happened from that moment on is the difference maker in all of our lives. Mm. And we know Christianity is true. Yeah, I'm excited to think of family sitting, watching what you just talked about, and then having a conversation. That's a gift. And, and you've given so many It's only many eight of us. minutes, guys. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we probably talked about the behind the scenes longer than what you'll actually see, but we did that on purpose. So kids stay tuned. And our kids need, our families need, we need the foundation of the gospel and Jesus because the world is screaming and they're distracting us from everything but that. You were excited being there. I can imagine families watching and it's an eight-minute video, so that's mm-hmm. good. But the conversations are going to happen with teenagers, college kids. I don't know. I just think it's going to be so exciting. To, I can't wait to do it. We haven't seen it. We've only seen the trailer. And by the way, you look good, man. Oh, thank you. And the, mu- <laughs> and the music, the, the, seriously, the music bed was yeah. really, I, mean, I was impressed. You didn't call me to, you know, do any music for you. but well, you got skills now. I'm, in, I'm impressed. Whatever. Um, I'm also excited to think that we can give this as a gift to our family life partners. You give a financial gift to family life, become a monthly partner with us. This is going to be your gift, Mm. not only for you, but for your family. This would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, and if I may, um, that's why I'm so happy to be partnering with family life. Um, This ministry is so crucial and the need is stark right now for strong families. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage everyone listening to partner with family life because this is a life-changing ministry and the fact that you can donate and then receive life-changing resources just to say thank you. This is something we all need to get on. I'm Shelby Abbott, and you've been listening to David Ann Wilson with Jeremiah Johnson on Family Life Today. So you might be wondering, how do I get the book and the video series? How do I get access to this study on the resurrection of Jesus? Super easy. The book and the study is going to be our gift to you when you partner with us today. You can get your copy right now with any donation by going to familylifetoday.com and clicking on the Donate Now button at the top of the page. Or you can give us a call with your donation at 800 800- 358-6329. Again, that number is 800-F as in family, L as in life, and then the word today. Or you can feel free to drop us a donation in the mail. Our address is Family Life, 100 Lake Hart Drive, Orlando, Florida, 32832. Just drop a note in there if you mail us something and request your copy of Body of Proof. If you know anyone who needs to hear conversations like the one you heard today, would you share this episode from wherever you get your podcast? And while you're there, you can really help others learn more about Family Life Today by leaving us a review. And tomorrow, Jeremiah Johnson is back to talk about the power of waiting on God. It's a very difficult thing to do, but a very positive thing. And he's going to talk about that, unpack that for us tomorrow. We hope you'll join us. On behalf of David Ann Wilson, I'm Shelby Abbott. We'll see you back next time for another edition of Family Life Today. Family Life Today is a donor-supported production of Family Life, a crew ministry, helping you pursue the relationships that matter most.